All right. I don't know. All right. Muted. Okay. I think we got it. So I want to thank again, everybody for coming on. It's been a long time. Um, Been trying to finish up school and I appreciate everybody's patience, but we are back and we're coming back strong um, in a nice way. So I want, again, I want to thank everybody for coming on. I don't know if everyone has seen on, on the group page, I have put up there the different topics that you would like us to talk about. So what I would like to do is kind of lighten it up a little bit because we talk a lot about violence in healthcare. It's very much needed. We have to talk about it. But again, you know, it's very heavy and we need to have a little bit of enlightenment, a little bit of uh, laughter, you know, change it up a little bit. So um, I like the topics that everybody's choosing um, safety and healthcare, legal issues in nursing working with difficult patients and families, anonymous reporting, current trends in nursing. So you can vote for what you would like on the, the, um, the group page. It is our free support group for all healthcare workers. And also I see if you're making any comments in here, if you like want to, um, you know, have any, you know, me to bring up anything. Um, we have had such a huge problem in healthcare, as everybody knows, um, with COVID. COVID has literally taken over not only our lives with trying to take care of patients, but also it is really promoted. It is really, it is really promoted isolation with our population, and with that isolation becomes a lot of it comes with a lot of feelings and a lot of people that feel like well, what do I do next, right? What happens next? Now that COVID is supposedly over, what happens next? How do we go back to our normal? It's going to be a long time before we come back as healthcare workers. And well, well, why is that? So I'm just going to recap over a lot of our webinars, a lot of the things that I've talked about over the years, because it's very important and introduce nurse talk. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool concept. So we have this whole population of isolation and you know and with that comes with you know poor coping mechanisms, you know people that are not seeing their family members that they, you know, that they would see like on a daily basis and it's gotten to the point that it's worn down on their minds where it's not just with the population but we as nurses absorb all of the behaviors that come to us from you know, all of our patients, from staff members that are going through all different varieties of issues in their own lives. And we are all just trying to hang on by a thread and uh, you know, literally a thread, probably about 10 people at a time on one thread. It's pretty severe. So you know, where do we go from here? Well, we have to heal. And the best way that I could find, you know, besides, you know, changing coping mechanisms, that means not overeating, you know, no drugging, no drinking, you know, and all of these different things that we do for comfort, it is time for us to get stronger because people are watching us, not only, not only patients, but our family members, you know, all the times that, you know, you know, we have a lot of nurses that are going to school trying to finish their clinical rotations, can't find any any clinical rotations because of COVID. You know, um, it's been extremely difficult for myself to even finish, you know, school. So it, it's it's been just one big ball of mess. And for myself, it has been hard. <laughs> juggling. I have two kids. I have two teenagers, single mom, and I've been going to school full time. I just finished my postdoctoral um, psychiatric nurse practitioner. I understand. I understand what's going on in the hearts and minds of nurses, what's happening. I've been on the, I've been in nursing since I was 16 years old, over 30 years. And I love it. I can never change I have to be a nurse, you know, it's just something that, you know, I can never just walk away from it. And that's why we have nurses against violence because we are building relationships one person at a time and being there for everybody. So 
as well as also taking care of ourselves, which we tend to forget because that's what caregiver, caregivers do. So without further ado, with Nurse Talk, it's going to be kind of interesting because as some of you guys, I've had a lot of, um, excuse me, I've had a lot of um, folks come and go with Nurses Against Violence, um, you know, either by choice, by circumstance, um, you know, and I've appreciated everybody helping me with trying to build the baby. Um, I really have. Um, we've come to a place where, you know, we have something way bigger than all of us. This is not about Dr. Sandy. This is not about, you know, so-and-so, whoever. This is about making sure that we don't let our nursing family down by saying, oh, I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. I can't do that. I have to stay no matter what. And um, I'm not perfect, okay? And, um, you know, so what do you do? You just keep going, right? The power of, of, you know, continuing the same path that you've always been on, but making it better is extremely important. So um, something that I wanted to, um, I've got a lot of criticism about, you know, being the founder and the, the president of Nurses Against Violence and trying to get a job. And I've been, you know, I mentioned a couple webinars ago that, I was asked to step down from Nurses Against Violence just so I can get a job. I'm not doing that. So, and I hope everybody out there that's listening will not give up on their dream of trying to either make our profession better or something that you've always wanted to do that will make our profession better. It is extremely important that we hold our own values with with nursing. And, and, and I, I'm laughing because I've had this thing and stuck in my head all day today about, you know, and I found it, it was really kind of funny. And I know I'm kind of digressing a little bit, but it's, it's actually really, really, uh, it's funny. So we've always heard about nursing and about how we don't, um, we advocate, right? So, and a lot of you know about my fancy little box of learned helplessness, right? So it's like, and I'll, I'll explain briefly what this is about. So we have this box, right? It's really cute, actually. I like it a lot, you know, a little leopard going on, you know. So the what's special, and it's kind of like a not so good special is that each and every one of us that decides that we're not going to take that chance and to do live our dreams and to change what's not right. This is us, right? We are here. And this is the way that everybody wants us. And what I mean by that is that you were conditioned to be in this box. And well, here goes the statement. What is it? Well-behaved women don't make history. We were born advocates. And I get chills by saying that because we, we are nurses. We advocate. We advocate for ourselves. We advocate for our patients. We have not been able to do that at all, right? It's always been, so what next? What are you going to put on me more again? When are we going to just say enough? Do we need, I mean, I'm not bashing anybody. I appreciate unions for what they do and their hard work. But do we really need a union to sit there and put our foot down? Hey, look at that. That's when you have a baby bulldog. <laughs> I would like everybody to meet Stella. She's a mess. There, Stella. Yeah, she's a mess. So she wants to be seen. So we'll fix that green screen another time. She's a mess. So well-mannered people, when it comes to advocating, do not make history. We are history makers. We are nurses. And we are out there to do what we have to do for our patients. Nurse Talk is going to bring in all kinds of guest speakers, which I'm really excited about, about what they're doing for innovating healthcare, as well as also what is next, right? What is next? What are we going to do in healthcare? There are things and there's positions out there that people have never even heard about. 
which is amazing. I'm finding and I'm meeting and I'm networking with so many different individuals that could help the people that are watching to find avenues of change on their floor. This is vital. We have to network. We have to get out there and we have to be a team. And we are, we just didn't realize how much of a team we were. So what I want to do with Nurse Talk is I want to make it more positive. And yeah, we have a huge amount of problems that we have to work through as a nursing profession, but it is us that's going to change everything about nursing and healthcare if we just believe. I promise you, one person at a time. I was scared to death in 2017 when I started this organization. Pretty much starting from the ground up, have you ever heard of nurses getting hurt? Have you ever, like talking to general public, have you heard what nurses get hurt by patients? Yeah, every day. And you know what it comes down to? It comes down to when I follow it all the way back because that's what I do. I find gaps and I fix them. I have found that it stems all the way back to nursing school, teaching nurses and given curriculum frameworks that are, have maybe like four or five bullets, maybe one sub bullet on addiction, on men, a severe mental illness. What do we have right now? We have a lot of severe mental illness that's happening and we have to fix, we have to fix the education system. We all are aware, even with our children, but if we are not prepared as, as frontline healthcare workers to go out there it is not the nurse's fault that this has happened. This is the gaps. This is the, these are serious gaps. And this is why nurses are getting injured. Yes, they're using, a lot of these experienced nurses are getting injured. Well, after a while, when you think that you could trust somebody, as time moves on, we are finding that these people, that these, we're getting some, we're getting some really insane criminals that are coming through the hospital system that are hurting nurses. And, I can't stomach it. It's really that bad. And if we are not preparing and, and, and these programs that are in the hospital system, they're not preparing nurses either. And it's not their fault. It's not nurses fault, but it is to, we do have to set forth in our own practice to make sure, Hey, what can I do to make things better? How can I do my practice better? And we're supposed to be forever learners. And this is what we have to do. We have to get out of our box. We have to get out of our shell. By doing that, hopefully plugging in to Nurses Against Violence and Nurse Talk, we can do that. Always thinking of different avenues, different ways, including coping mechanisms, different things that we can do as a profession and as a nursing organization to help you get ahead. And that is my goal, my passion, and recognizing these kinds of behaviors as well. So we will have some education as well that I'm going to be volunteering to give, of course, to keep people safe. Um, so we're going to have all kinds of different, you know, folks, if you have any ideas of any um, speakers that you would like to, to them to come on to talk to me with a green screen that's actually working without a baby bulldog pulling it down, I would love to be able to talk with them and see what they have. We have exciting, I'm already booked all the way through mid-August. And we have some other things that are coming down the pike that are for benefits for uh, frontline healthcare workers. Um, and I, I'm very excited to share that with you because I've been talking about it for a very long time. Of course, you have to do all of that right now. So without further ado, I want to welcome everybody to the new page of Nurses Against Violence Unite, where we are taking over nursing. And I know, I know for a fact, just for an example, I know there have been people that have met offline that have gone to have coffee and that have talked about, hey, what are we going to do? I know that there's people out there every day that are like using the things that we talk about in our webinars to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm tired. I want to know who this Becky is. I want to get to know her because she's always been really nice to me, but I've been so caught up in my head that I have not bothered to even introduce myself formally. You know, that is changing the face of healthcare. We have a lot of people that are being, that are extremely uncivil to each other. And that makes a very violent situation for not only us and in, in, interpersonally inside of us, because we feel like we can't talk to anybody, 
And then we go take care of a patient. Is that a safety? Is that a safety problem? Absolutely. There's tons of literature out there that talks about incivility and how it is, it is a problem for, you know, medical errors, medication errors. It's out there. It's widespread. Let's not talk about, let's not forget to talk about staffing, right? We talk about staffing. Yeah. But it, is that the root of the problem? No, it's not the root of the problem. As we've seen with COVID, we have seen that there has been a large amount of, well, people not getting treated right. So are you going to stay if you're not getting treated right? Are you going to stay in this little box? And are you going to stay in here? No, 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 no. You know, you got to report things. We have to report things as, as scary as it is and as horrible as they treat you, you have to report things because at the end of the day, you could go home and go to bed and rest good for the most part when you're not too stressed out. But you did what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to report. You're supposed to advocate for yourself. You're not getting treated right. Somebody's being jerky to you on the floor. Hey, can I, can I talk to you and have a witness if you need to and go into another room and say, hey, you know what? I just want to clear the air. I just, we have been through a lot and we are a team and I want to continue to be a team. I've done this many times and it's, it's flattened. It's, it's made everything so much better because they don't know you, you don't know them. And it's your perception of what they think of you. And we're not all perfect. We're not all perfect. So we can't pretend like, like we are, because if we do, then we're going to make a mistake right? And you know, somebody's waiting there right now. Like, let's wait for somebody to make a mistake, right? And when it comes down to it, we create our surroundings. And I know every single person that is, is watching me right now is perfectly capable and is perfectly willing to get out there and say, hey, you know what? My name is so-and-so or not shake hands yet because of COVID, but I would like to, you know, what is your favorite, you know, what is your favorite animal? Talk about something crazy, you know, have fun, laugh a little bit. That's going to break the monotony because life is hard enough. And if we cannot do that, that's, you know, laughing is a coping mechanism, right? They might think you're a little nuts by laughing, you know, for no reason. But you know what? That is their perception. And they want to know what you're thinking because you're laughing. You're sitting there crushing meds with a smile on your face because you're thinking about something awesome. You're not thinking about somebody that just barked your head off, right? So let's restructure the way that we think. Let's change and recondition our profession. We got to get out of this hole, guys. We got to do it together. And I'm more, more than willing more than willing to put myself out here and try to do that and try to show everybody, you know, you can't, it's a matter of just taking that step. It's a matter of just getting out there and doing it one baby step at a time. So I want to thank you very much for coming on with me. We had a little wardrobe malf malfunction from Stella, the English bulldog puppy. And I want to thank you, every single one of you guys, for joining me this evening. I don't want to, I want to cut this a little bit short because I know that this is just the introduction. We're going to have a great guest on next week and we have some awesome things to unveil. And I look forward to seeing everybody again. All right, guys, have a good night.